This is the Ladies Who Lead podcast. I'm your host, Luna Love. I'm blessed to be here chatting with some of the most amazing and inspiring female leaders we have today to share their stories with you all. I'm ever so passionate about the call humanity is receiving, especially us women, to step forward in our birthright as leaders. A new era in women's leadership is unfolding, where actions are heart-centered, where we encourage others to step into their greatness, and self-care is a priority. So for the next 45 minutes or so, we'll be engaging in the lost art of storytelling, where vulnerability and celebration are abundant, and women who inspire you share their challenges, triumphs, tips, and tools for you to step into personal leadership in your life. Welcome. This episode of Ladies Who Lead has been sponsored by the Passion, Purpose, and Potential program, a three-week online journey that supports you in embracing and sharing your authentic purpose. If you're just starting out on your journey into personal leadership or you're looking to go deeper, this is for you. It's a journey of finding out who you are, and as a result, you find out what you can do that excites you. It comes with daily videos and self-exploration booklets for 21 days, deepening in that inner sense of satisfaction and fulfillment. Sign up to start the Purpose Program today at LunarLoveLeadership.com slash purpose or find it in the shop. So today I am so blessed to announce that we have the super inspiring Alyssa Nobriga here with us and she's ready to dive deep and share her wisdom and stories and take on feminine leadership. And Alyssa is a soul-centered professional coach, author. She leads mastermind groups and retreats. And you can find Alyssa at alyssanobriga.com and on Instagram and Facebook. So we're super excited to have you here today. Thanks so much. Thank you. I love this conversation that you're starting and I'm really honored to be a part of it. Awesome. Yeah. And I think it's a Thank you so much for being here and sharing that. And also just like, I think it's a continuation rather than that I'm starting because I know you've started this conversation and so many who have come before us generations and generations have really opened this door and we're just taking a deeper look and maybe putting a little more action in the, after the conversation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's definitely evolving, but you really opening the platform for other women to, and, and men to really come together to look at what is this like for me, I think is really important, especially at this time. So I really, yeah, yeah I'm excited. Awesome. Me too. So we always start by just doing a little blessing. So wherever you are, Ah, this is just for all of us to come into one accord. So if it feels good for you, unless you're driving, please close your eyes and just allow the body to settle, noticing any places where you're constricting or holding and just seeing if we can let that go. And we ask that the <clears throat> all-encompassing energy of love comes to fill, clear, surround, and protect us so that only that which is for the highest good come forward. And we trust that everything that presents itself today, that we talk about, that comes up within each one of us, that is listening and sharing all the thoughts and feelings and emotions and physical sensations, we trust that they are here for our learning and growth and service to this beautiful journey that we're on. And we come into one accord by just taking one big full deep breath together. So wherever you are, fully empty and exhale here. And we'll all take a big full deep inhale together. Hold for a moment. And when you're ready, just let it out. Nice sigh. Beautiful, allowing the eyes to open in their own timing. All right. Well, thanks so much again. And I'm just excited to just jump right in with you. So I know that you also have been kind of exploring this idea. You have been leading um, women's groups and clients and things like that for pretty intensively for the past year and, and more, but really focusing on women's, women in leadership and feminine leadership. So what has, 
what has that experience been like? And kind of take us through the cycle and the journey because I'm sure the ideas that you may have started with <laughs> are very different now. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's definitely a, a continual um, evolution of defining what feminine leadership is. Um, and it's been fascinating because every year my work has been changing and evolving. So last year I was um, really clear I wanted to take a, a, a leadership role myself. And I knew I wanted to, to just serve, but I, there was, I wasn't clear on what the form was. So I just kept taking action and then listening to what wanted to happen, what wanted to be birthed. And then I had some girlfriends come forward to ask me, how did you build your coaching practice? How did you become successful so fast? And so I knew I wanted to do, a, to do more leadership work and then here was the need. And so put together a coaching group, a six month mastermind group for, for Soul Center Professional Coaches. And thought that that was just going to be its form and, and was really enjoying that and felt like life was apprenticing me around this topic of feminine leadership, not having one hierarchical, I'm the leader and this means X, Y, and Z about me, but really just creating the space for people. This took the form of women to really hear their own wisdom, to feel safe, to be vulnerable, to be collaborative and to celebrate each other in the process. And, um, and, what ended up unfolding from that was another group wanting to be formed without sort of my, you know, I don't necessarily do like a three year plan for my business. It's really more about a tuning into and a listening to what wants to happen. And that's been a big part of this, what I would call feminine leadership. Part of what I've been learning is um, somehow there's still a, an action and an engagement, but really listening to and being present to what, um, where life is sort of drawing me. So I love the, the analogy of a bamboo. I love the idea of intentionality and direction, but really swaying to where life's leading me because I feel like more synchronicities can unfold in that way of operating than I could have planned or tried to make happen, you know, like pushing things uphill. And so part of what I've been discovering in feminine leadership is that we have really similar things that we hit up against, whatever our goal is, you know, to open a business or to, um, to lose weight or to, you know, start a family, whatever that goal is, we all tend to go through similar things as we're moving forward and stepping outside of our comfort zone, right? And with women in particular, I've noticed things like perfectionism hold us back, trying and feeling like I'm not ready to prepare yet has been another big theme. Um, other topics like they've already done it, you know, who am I to do it? Some self-doubt or shame. And I've experienced all those within myself. And, and it feels like if there's a, you know, having the tools to really do our inner work and then to still take action and to show up for it. It's like we're always supported at the exact moment we need to know what we're supposed to share or to supposed to do next. But oftentimes out of fear, we want to plan really far out in the future. And I, I love planning. I'm all about that. And I love male ways of um, leadership as well. And I love what you're sharing, feminine leadership being, di being different than male leadership. And both are beautiful, a little bit out of balance, you know, in terms of our collective. And I think that's why there's this movement coming to really help bring it into balance. Um, but this more feminine way to me seems like just a receptivity, a flow, a synchronicity, a listening. And, and it's like, how do we really listen when that, that voice of fear is kicking and screaming. And, and so it's like really having the inner tools to support ourselves in um, <clears throat> doing our inner work so that we can be present and really hear the guidance. And, um, and it just feels like this more collaborative way of sisterhood, of coming together to support each other through the process. Then we become examples of, and we are the, the next generation of what this looks like to embody and to live it and just to show that there is another way and to remind each other through it. So I've seen a lot, I feel like in the last year, particularly coaching these mastermind groups of, of about 20 people through this more um, feminine way of finding their, their flow. And that may look different at different moments. You know, it may look like a bit of engagement and more male. And then later it may look more receptive. And it could be this sort of, ideally it's more spiritual leadership where they're in balance. And there's this dance of action and engagement with stillness and, um, and really a, a receptivity 
And so that's where I feel like the, the real juice and magic is. And it feels like on a collective, I can sense that this movement is happening and, you know, you're, you're contributing to the conversation of feminine leadership feels really important and opening for all of us to really help things come into balance. So I love that you're opening the stage for all of us to explore this more deeply. Thank you so much. Yeah, I think that what I'm in the interviews and in what you're sharing, a big theme that has come up is really about listening. Mm -hmm. Listening, 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 listening for the guidance from outside of ourselves, listening to our, our own intuition, listening to our sisters, listening, listening, listening. <laughs> and, um, you know, when you were sharing, something came up for me that um, Nisha Moodley, she put together Global Sisterhood Day last year. And um, again, this year in the video that she offered, it had this beautiful diagram of sisters is actually like a construction word. And it's the beams that run a certain way that like holds the whole thing up. Yeah. And the beams are called sisters. Mm. And I just thought that that was such a perfect definition and that all these buildings and construction, anything that's being held up is being held up by these beams that run a certain way directionally that are to get one won't work, but together when they come together, each one is called a sister. And I just loved that. Yeah. It's like, it's like we remind each other when the ego or when the fear kicks up, like we, we help hold each other in a deeper truth. Yeah. Support and, beams. Yeah. Support <laughs> beams. And, and we're in this together, you know, we're completely in this together. And so um, I love that sort of foundation, these, these support beams. And, and for me, it feels like that could be a, a girlfriend. It could be my husband. It could be my spiritual practice, but whatever helps, um, whatever helps me listen more deeply to my own intuition and knowing feels like a, a strong pillar to lean on. Has your, so you've been doing your practice and your work for a while leading and it's evolved. Mm -hmm. Any major shifts and changes after you got married? Um, yes, actually big shift mainly because I felt like that was having a, actually, a, and this is not what you're probably expecting, but having a wedding planner, I think it was my first coach <laughs> in a way, because I mean, it was more of an assistant coach, but having a vision that I wanted to bring to life and working with my husband through this. And um, really our intention for the wedding was to create an expression of our love and to, to have everyone be served at our wedding. It was very intimate, very unique. And, um, and so seeing what it would look like to have a vision and to have somebody help support us and bring that to life got me so excited that after I got married, I hired my first official coach. And that's really where I was like, wow, this is a fun process of, you know, conscious creation. And my life really took off because I started, um, I started, I hired a coach and I really became intentional about creating things in my life, which just was fun and continues to evolve. Like, like I shared every year, you know, just keep listening to right now. It's, it's looking like writing a book through expressions of words and sharing in that way. I think the heart of the work is the same. The essence of it is the same, but the, ex the forms and the expression change every year. And that's been dynamic and fun as well. Awesome. So what is the book about? <laughs> I haven't actually ever shared about it publicly. Um, <laughs> I'll share about it right <laughs> now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I don't have necessarily, um, it, there, it's, you know, the most beautiful thing about this book is that it's simply listening. So it's not me writing it. And it may come into the, I may hear guidance from a child, you know, speaking next door or a song that comes on the radio or um, a conversation I have with a friend, but it feels like it's really an act of listening. And so f there's another form of being apprenticed by life about how this book is wanting to take form. And some of the themes in the book are about what I call the core fear. It's like, what is that voice that is, if you look at it from like a bird's eye point of view, what is that common theme or core fear that holds us back from sharing our medicine and gifts in the world? And for me personally, it's been the story of I'm not good enough. 
And so how, and how do I work with that? How do I use that for my own awakening and more fully embody a deeper truth? Because it's, it's here as a gift and actually has, um, doesn't always feel that way. And it's, it's evolved and changed in the, in the working with it. So there's, elements of what has held me back and what, I, what I've seen held, hold a lot of people back that I've coached and that I've worked with. <clears throat> and then it's about um, sharing your gifts in the world in a really conscious, uh, engaged way. So the title of the book is called Stillness and Stilettos. And it's really about a, a foot in both worlds, really tuning into a deeper stillness and truth while still sharing your heartfelt gifts and expression in the world. And so um, it's very much in alignment with our conversation and what I'm continuously evolving and hearing and wanting to share other women in particular, but also men to really stand in knowing of who they, who they are independent of anything that they do or don't do, to really know their inherent value and worth independent from any of that and to still share and express and create and play in this world of form. That is such a fun title, and I'm so excited to read it when it comes out. <laughs> too. Yeah, it feels really good, and I love, I've been writing a book, and I, I don't talk about it because I'm just, like, not in this, like, practice of, or process of, like, it's going to be in this certain timing. I'm just, like, sometimes I write, and sometimes I don't, but I've had the idea for a little while, and it's the piece around sharing your gifts, mm-hmm. I think, is really what I find in in the world it's just like we are held back Mm -hmm. and so like purpose and who we are and the spiritual nature of who we are is really our life purpose like to be loving Mm -hmm. and then then the personal gifts that each person has how do we how do we cultivate and embrace and share those because i think the sharing the service is really where the fulfillment piece comes from and so stepping into service Mm -hmm. what has your path into leadership even from like a youth Mm-hmm. Has that been easy, natural, confronting, challenging? What what has that journey of stepping into leadership more and more over the years been like for you? That's great. You know, when you first shared stepping into service, I what comes up naturally is like the way that I run my business is what I call generosity based business, and so it, I lead with service. And in that way, it feels like I don't get in my own way, right? So if there's so for example, nerves before a talk or um, <clears throat> whatever I may be doing that's outside my comfort zone, if I can really connect in with my heart and tune into the intention of service, how can I really be used? How can I use this conversation for a deeper truth to serve in a deeper way? It's like I get out of my own way and then something else moves through to really um, be in that flow, be in alignment with the grace that is always here. And so I, that's been a, sort of a tangible, practical way of managing any sort of inner turmoil that m- may come up as I've been stepping outside my own comfort zone. But it also is in alignment with spiritual principles and how I have been um, organizing and leading in my business. And so uh, I, you know, it's, it's definitely evolved over time. It's gotten a lot lighter and I continue to show up and meet my edge and do my work so that I can show up fully and serve and um, allow however and whatever wants to be spoken to be expressed. But yeah, it's, it's, it's evolved and it continues evolving and I'm up for the ride. I'm up for the ride. Have you ever, have you ever wanted to quit? Have I what? Ever wanted to quit? Oh, certain things. Absolutely. Yeah, certain things. Absolutely. Like um, your, like, what I mean is more like the path that you're on. Have you ever had those moments of like, is this even right? Am I totally in a different place than I should be? Like that kind of thing. I, the way that it shows up for me more than that, I feel, re- I love the work that I do. And I, I feel like there's a, like, there's a deep, solid grounding in that. I think where it trips up inside of me is that wanting to be somewhere else, wanting to be in the future. And so that's where I have to do my own work to just trust that I'm exactly where I need to be and to really stay awake to what I'm being taught in my life currently, rather than 
future tripping and wanting to be somewhere else because I think that chase for more doesn't ever stop. And I, and I feel like you're absolutely right. The fulfillment comes with service. The fulfillment comes with embodying and being fully present. And rather than playing that game of more or better and, you know, which doesn't stop, um, it's been, it's been more practice for me. My own edge has been about just fully arriving where I am. And there's ironically a, a deeper joy in that. And yes, you know, it, sometimes it's, in alignment, things are flowing, and other times, you know, there's more opportunity to to do my inner work. And I notice if I'm not doing inquiry, for example, is a spiritual practice of mine, really questioning my thoughts or having a consistent meditation practice. If I'm operating more out of my mind and conditioning, that's when the that's when I notice I'm a little bit too heavy into the stillness. And needing to sort of balance back i'm sorry to the stilettos and needing to ba balance back into stillness so that there's it's like the more engaged i am in life the, the deeper the spiritual practice needs to be to really honor a deeper truth other than other than getting wrapped up by a mind-dominated conditioned story i really i really like what you shared because and it's like that grass is always greener kind of mentality i get that i'm a daydreamer mm -hmm. and my partner is very present and I'm often like, I had this dream and it was like all this future stuff and he, like and it entertains him. But, um, and I think it's fun. I mean, I think there's yeah. something really beautiful in the imagination and to create and play as long as it's not meaning anything about who we are. Right. Like, and like being dissatisfied with what's happening now. I yeah. think that's a big thing. Like that doesn't really, I don't have that, that part as much of just like, oh, I'm dissatisfied with what's here. So I'm like daydreaming about what could be better. It's more just like excitement and yeah. Yeah. yeah and that, that's fun to play with, right? Without getting too wrapped in the dream. Yeah. yeah. One thing I love that you shared that totally struck me was the, in, I like the idea of just using this, this languaging of stilettos and stillness, because what I hear is that as we go deeper into the the stilettos, the physical world's reality, the um, our goals and our dreams and the houses and the things and the all of that, that's fine. It's beautiful. It's part of the, the beauty and gifts of this world. And what I heard you say was, the more I am in that world, the deeper my spiritual practice needs to be. And so it's like, great, go for it. Yeah. Have all the cars and money and houses and jobs and retreats and clients and whatever it is. And like, let it be balanced by deepening in this other realm as well. Yeah. And, and it feels like, and even more than a balance, like, yes, I think when there's too much stilettos, absolutely stillness is the access point to come back. Um, if there's a perception of being gone, right? But even the the stiletto, even the stilettos being birthed from stillness, like there's an inspiration and synchronicity and things that come forward that are much more tuned with the one, with the impulse of creation. When it comes from that place, it's like I love the I love this idea of drive and ambition and creativity, except for it's like what's driving us. Is it inspiration or are we being driven away from what we fear? Like, where is it coming from? Where is it coming from? To be the source. Right. To be conscious within ourselves. And when there's deeper pillars of uh, practice, of, of tuning into this, this truth that is, it's like it, there's joy and inspiration in, that, that comes from it. And it's wrapped in a... Um, it just feels more true. It feels more honest. It feels more in alignment when it comes from there versus any type of um, perception of lack or scarcity, which is so innocent and so okay. And if those parts come up for us or for any of the people listening, to know that there's space for all of that, to know that that's even welcome to, that that's part of the one, that's part of our humanity, to really embrace all parts of ourselves. And as we do that, we come back to stillness to this deeper truth all over again, right? It's like, it's never actually gone. It just apparently seemed that, that way. And as we take a breath and really tune back into our hearts, it's, we, we connect consciously and then the expression and the form and 
and creativity come from there. So true, so true. And I think having that practice looks different for everyone. Yeah. And just finding what stillness, stillness might be dance for someone, mm -hmm. you know, and I think that that's such a great, great thing to always come back to that, that place where, where we can, even if we're doing something to find the stillness, mm -hmm. so that we can hear that truth. Yeah. So I'm all about collecting data. Okay. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> well, just like, you know, you said like, you know, inquiring about your thoughts. So like, collecting data as a way to what is my experience has been like okay I do this and this is what happens I do this and this is what happens and it's like if it's a negative result that's not pleasing to your body uh, not giving you positive results like how can we see that it's not necessarily the result of the situation or the environment but maybe it's like the participation, our own participation. And so I love to collect data in my own life to see how I can change my participation. Like if I'm having a communication issue, okay, that's, I just collected data back from that person and I get to refine from that place. So what I hear the last year of your work has been is collecting data, has been like working with these women in your masterminds, in your one-on-one -on -one coaching practice where the focus has been helping and supporting them into stepping into feminine leadership in their own way. Yeah. What are some of the things that you've collected that you see are really what, as a collective, you know, based on your, your um, data group, mm -hmm. what have you seen that are the main things that we can focus as a collective on refining as taking another approach? And, and you're asking about what's a different way of leadership through what I've seen and what's worked with some of the women? Yeah, like what are, what are the women bringing forward that's like, okay, that way of being isn't working. Mm. And as a collective, we all need to kind of step in a new direction. What does that look like? Right. What are some of the main blocks that you feel like women have come up with? Yeah, that's a great question. And it'll be specific to coaching. And again, I'll just speak around that because I was coaching women to become soul center professional coaches and it can be used with anything it can translate. So, um, and when you're saying, you know, data and collecting, collecting what's to me, it's like the feedback, the feedback that works and the feedback that, you know, that's telling you maybe you try it a different way, sweetheart. It's exactly. You're running up to, into a wall there. Um, I would say, and this is more my, my, I'm obviously going to be biased towards this, but my personal approach is stillness and then stilettos. So for example, having that inner alignment and knowing it's like, if you have a competing intention within your psychology, so if you have the desire to create more and to be seen and to express and to serve, but you also have another in, uh, intention to be safe and thinking that being seen isn't safe, those two are going to rub up against each other. And so I always, my approach personally, and then the women are the people that have coached, it's about changing that from the inside out, right? So it's like, how do I shift my beliefs and how do I move through this emotionally so that I can be more present and take action from there? So anytime people try to create results only on the goal line of life, it's going to we're going to like life is a mirror, right? So life is going to mirror anything that we're holding in our consciousness. And so rather than, and so the, the data, the feedback isn't bad. It's just reminding us or showing us what is operating inside of us and how can we address it at the root inside and then take action from there. So, um, you know, running from, running from any of our fears or trying to create in the world, without fully having it in alignment or feeling within our integrity and feeling true for us and only doing it from the outside doesn't work. And there's something I feel like when women come together, and this is why I put these, these groups together is because it feels like when we model it, model it for each other, we share, this is possible. We share, we go through the similar things. It's really normal and it's okay. And we can come together to be supported and, um, and to create that change, it's going to look differently for each person and the timing is going to be differently, but to not take it personally, I think is a huge one. Like the mind can make up a lot of meaning about this means X, Y, and Z about me. And what is that core story that we tell ourselves? 
and how do we wake up from that so we don't just automatically assume that and about every situation that it's not sort of quote unquote going our way. And then how do we stay consistent with our action because it's, it's honoring something that's tr deeper in our own hearts. So if, um, so I guess taking it personally would be a big one. Um, giving up. I think a lot of people, when they start taking it personal, they give up. And oftentimes people give up right before the magic, you know? And so it's like, stay with it. It's totally okay. You're so supported in it. And you'll know exactly when you need to know. And so sometimes we don't know when we take the next step and then life shows us right before the, the call or the session or the group. And to also share our vulnerabilities. Like we don't need to be perfect. You know, it's, we're, we're enough as we are and maybe our actions and behaviors will evolve and change and that will happen through the action. The confidence will come through the action, not feeling, okay, I'm ready. I'm, you know, good to go and then start. But it's like we, we are um, crafted and shifted and shaped in terms of our psychology and our, our craft as we go along. So um, this idea of taking it personal, thinking that um, or having group support and people to really reflect a nourishing environment, having our own spiritual practices. Um, I'm trying to think of specific things in the group that I saw didn't work. Oftentimes, these com the competing intention is a big one. I'm doing a webinar tomorrow called Success in Soul about really coming into alignment and helping people get out of their own way. Because oftentimes, these parts of ourselves are well intended, but they sort of co-opt what we say we want because they're they're honoring a, a different intention of maybe safety and so if we can really help those parts of ourselves come into alignment we're much more graceful in our action we don't hit up against the same roadblocks and it's not always easy and that's okay and we are here for each other to remind each other about that and i think that's part of the feminine leadership and this new way of being and I and we're the generation to really live this and to model this for each other and that is super exciting and inspiring to me. It it surely is. It is really inspiring and I love the the things that you brought forward because they're really valuable reflections for myself and the listeners to just see like where is that present inside of me? Is it present inside of me? And how can I approach competing intentions or whatever might come forward um, in order to serve my greater intention of, of being of service and in, in the best way that I can and just kind of like getting past the things that hold me back. Yeah. And it's, and it's all in service, right? Like we can use all of it for our own growth and awakening and we can use all of it for, it's like, it's not my coach, Robert Holden talks about, um, this isn't an interruption to your life. This is your life. And so it's like using everything in, in service to that deeper intention. And, you know, a big part of, of, a big part of it is really just letting go of the past, just letting it go and just being fully present so that we can listen, so that we can be with these parts of ourselves that are showing up because every, in my experience, whatever's coming up is ready to be met with the presence of love that you are. And so it's simply, yeah, it's simply an opportunity to just welcome all those parts of ourselves within our sort of sub, you know independent body mind structure but also mirrored in in our clients also mirrored in our life experience so it's like speaking from a larger perspective it's it's all one right so anything that's being mirrored is an opportunity to love myself more fully right yes yes i love that you work with robert um yeah I, I work at an addiction care center a few days a week, and I'm constantly recommending lovability as a read for so many of them. And it's such like when people actually, so, you know, they get recommended so many books and, and when people actually read it, they all come back to my office and are like, this is amazing. <laughs> and I love that. That's super special. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful work he's sharing in the world. So biggest challenge that you've had to overcome in your life it doesn't necessarily need to be on the career path just biggest challenge i would say the my own personal course story and interpretation of things has been i'm not good enough and so that's going to show up in different flavors and different situations and really um 
meeting the part of myself that didn't feel worthy or didn't feel lovable, right? To really just allow that to, um, <laughs> to be met, to be, to be accepted, to be embodied. You know, it, um, I was thinking of, it, so it, this sort of story comes up in different situations, right? And it still comes up and it's okay. Now it's rather than the, the beautiful shift that's happened is rather than thinking that that should go away, it's like, how can I love this that shows up? And so it's all allowed, right? And so it's how, how can I really align with the presence that already welcomes this? And how can I be this compassionate? Not how can I be, I, we are it, but it's like, how can I align my personality so I can experience more fully? And actually that's part of the gift. The very things I think that are causing us challenges or holding us back, quote unquote, are the gifts and the medicine that we embody and share and remind each other of. And so that it's, um, it's a part of our, part of our process. And, you know, that shows up in different specific, like different ways in my own life. I'm happy to share certain situations if that would be helpful, but the, really the core story is I'm not good enough and how, and really been using that as a wake up call to see, of course, my psychology could never be enough, right? As a separate self, it's not enough. And the truth of me is beyond any idea of good enough and not good enough. Like beyond both of those is the truth of what I am. Any, any ideas that split and separate good and bad, right and wrong. But I am this presence that sees all of it, this radiance. And so are you. And so is everyone. The, the truth of who we are is this radiance that sees all of it and allows all of it. So that has been one of the greatest challenges and one of the greatest blessings in my life and continues to be. And the, the, the great blessing has been the shift from how can this, how can this stop coming up to how can I love this that comes up? That's been a big, I love, thank you for sharing all of that. Um, I think that's something that a lot of people can really relate to is just feeling that I think that's a human core challenge is like the lovability piece that um validity enoughness worthiness at the core of it and you know it plays out in different stories like abandonment and different different things that each person kind of puts their own spin on those things but what you shared has been a huge shift in my life as well of just like I don't want to feel this way to like oh cool you're still here come on let's you know <laughs> let's explore this together and like oh you're still feeling this way and having compassion for that part and just seeing it as an opportunity for greater deepening and growth and in the blessing you know I shared just like trusting that everything that comes up inside of us that everything is that this conversation or whatever might be happening in somebody else's world while they're listening maybe there's you know in having a lot of distractions, like whatever is coming up, that that's the perfect thing that your consciousness is bringing up in order to say like, this is ready to be looked at and healed. Yeah. And it might be through layers of time and experiences, but the way we meet that, whatever comes up is how that process happens. And that shift has been so powerful. So I'm so glad that you were able to speak to that as well through your own experience. Yeah. And, I, and I'm aware of when you're sharing the different layers of how these things come up, I'm aware of sometimes when it's just sort of on a surface level mentally, you know, the comparison or thinking um, I should be somewhere else. It's oftentimes when it's only being accessed at a mental level, it's feedback for me that I'm avoiding something, feeling something, right? And so it's like, oh, okay, can I just sit with this sensation? And before I create a story about that sensation, just notice that it's just energy moving in the body, right? So we get more intimate with it and somehow um, we deconstruct how we've, okay, the sensation comes up, I make a story about what it means and who I am and what my future and my past. And so really starting to unravel that and the more mindfulness and presence we bring to it and actually allowing it too. Because oftentimes as we're, we're leading in our lives, we're meeting up against our comfort zones, these things will come up. And that's so okay. And it's a part of it. And we, we stretch the capacity to be with the range of emotion by being courageous and honest and vulnerable and real. And 
somehow these things get aired out, you know, and they, they don't have so much charge. And, you know, when they do, just to be gentle with ourselves through it and, um, and sisterhood or spiritual practice or whatever it is that speaks to each of us that can really anchor in uh, a deeper truth can, can be those pillars, can be the support. Very true. Uh, so last few questions wrapping up. Um, any major life lessons, like in a nutshell, that either you've gathered on your own or a spiritual teacher or a mentor has given you that is just like impacted and like changed your life where you heard it and you were just like, Oh, this is, this is it. <laughs> <laughs> Juicy stuff. <laughs> yes. Um, I, my favorite quote in the world is by St. Francis of Assisi. And he says, you are what you're looking for. And so that has been the medicine of my life, whether that be in relationships and love or career. It's like what I'm looking for is what's looking. What I'm looking for is what's looking. And so rather than finding it outside, really to turn around and look back at what is looking has been the medicine and the teaching of my life. And you know, there's tendencies to look out and looking out is the same as well, but it's not experientially embodied and known and until it's sort of turned around and seen. And so, you know, for whomever may be listening, just to sit with that question of um, this awareness, like what is peering through these eyes right now and what is hearing this, these sounds and to really just marinate and, and relish and nourish in the the beauty of your being. I think that is like just having just previously heard what you're most challenged with. Mm -hmm. I couldn't think of a better, <laughs> a better quote or medicine or teaching to, to support that. And I love that you have received that yeah. and that you're able to share it with us today. So thank you. Thank you, Luna. <laughs> and it's like, and I'm just aware of like, you know, this idea of becoming, you know, and the medicine is you already are. You already are. Exactly. You know, before any of those ideas of who I'm not or who I will be beyond any idea, it's like just sourcing back to sitting back in and resting in this radiance that you already are. And when I know this and embody this and when my friend or when you or you know it's like when we all be this for e each other we live this for ourselves first just looking at someone from this knowing is a is the blessing of a lifetime it's like we remind each other we spark that within each other and so as we share our gifts from this knowing when we or we don't share our gifts we just be it so like that is the gift you know it's not necessarily about doing it, it can, either way it doesn't matter but that is the deeper purpose and um, the deeper gift I feel like we are here to remind each other of. And from that, lots of creative expressions and playful things will be you know, shared in the world. And that real medicine and the magic is in the, in the radiance of who we already are. I absolutely agree. And that's the biggest intention of this, this podcast and this platform is, is to do just that, is to to share embodied beings and share their, their presence and their voices and their stories in their, you know, embodying feminine leadership or embodying loving, mm -hmm. embodying all these qualities of feminine leadership as a way to, to give that permission piece to others. Um, and not like pushing it, but just like take it or leave it. Like this can and will inspire you if, if we allow ourselves to see the parts of ourselves mm -hmm that I can see in you. Yeah. Like it's not, it, there's no difference. If I can see it, well, then that means that it's inside of me. And when I embrace that it's inside of me, um, then I give myself permission to step into that and share that and then inspire another being and then inspire another being just through that permission that I give myself to be me fully. Mm -hmm. It allows other people to say that, like, I can do that too. That feels so good. Look how happy they are. A hundred percent. And and it's juicy and it's nourishing to be around and remind we're reminded of a different way of leading and living and 
and when it's not coming from this againstness or positionality of it needs to be a certain way, we just silently and confidently own and, and embody that. And actually that's louder because we know it in our bones rather than needing to prove it to someone else. And, um, and you know, it just I'm, I'm aware of the analogy of, of water and how powerful water is. And over time, it can carve a hole in, in a rock. And just this like graceful confidence and this graceful knowing. And um, yeah, I'm just present to that in this moment. Thank you for sparking this inspiration. I, I continued the vision and I saw the water flowing and I was like, it doesn't see like a huge drop of like, <laughs> and then like turn around and go back. It just <laughs> <laughs> That's great. I love that. And it's, it's just where it's at in the journey. It's not like I should be at that river bank, right? It's just flowing, just allowing and totally okay. And permission for the parts of us that think, you know, I should be at the other river bank or I want to be further along on the, in the river it's it's like all of it is welcomed all of it is allowed in this bigger radiance that you are awesome. so our our bonus question our last question is is the same for everyone and it's one of my favorites is just who are the one or two or three women dead or alive famous we may know them we may not know them at all who have inspired you and given you that permission piece mm, i love this question Ah, I feel like every woman does in her own way. Truthfully, every woman does in her own way. And, you know, I can talk about spiritual teachers of mine um, who have been huge influences of this new way of sort of graceful, receptive leadership, yin leadership in a way. Um, uh, Mary Holnick, a teacher of ours is just a beautiful expression and reminder for me. Uh, Gangaji has been a beautiful teacher of mine. Just when I was 18, randomly jumped out at me at a, I was up in Shasta with my dad at a, when we used to rent videos, you know, and just saw this woman and she just grabbed me. And I listened to something, a, a video of hers and just tears streaming down my face. And I had no idea what she was saying. Everything in my body got it. Um, but so those are sort of, you know, spiritual teachers of mine, but I would say my girlfriends, you know, my, my girlfriends and my clients and my stepdaughters. It's like we all, every single one of them remind me of myself in a different way and remind me of what I, um, what I need to hear in that moment. So we are that, I, I guess I would say we are that for each other. Mm, that is so good and so valuable. And Another permission piece for us to just see that in, in each other all the time. It doesn't have to be Oprah Winfrey. And it's awesome if it is. And, <laughs> and everyone can inspire. And if we like look for the little gems and like maybe they're not as apparent as we think. You know, maybe the, the homeless woman like begging for a change on the road who looks dirty and messy like has a gem that could be empowering for us if we if we can shift our perspective absolutely and you know it yes absolutely there's a man who um, my husband and I have been connecting with and supporting who was homeless and he's he to me I mean you're absolutely 100% it's like if without the idea that he's homeless and that he's a man and he's separate it's like we we meet more intimately right and then we can see these gifts that we that we can learn from everyone and his level of resilience. I was, I asked him, I said, do you need a, a jacket? It's cold. And he said, it's not that cold. You're, I'm fine. And just kept like reminding me of the power of being present and just being resilient and okay. And not wanting extra things, not really needing it, you know? Um, yeah. I feel like going through our days, like just as an invitation for all of us to go through our days to really learn from everyone that we connect with and that we meet, you know, whether it be um, whomever it may be in the grocery store, just the ordinary experiences. Yeah. And, and you, you were mentioning, you know, like I could name spiritual teachers of mine and it's really like, it is it's everyone. It's everyone. Yeah. And I, yeah, just being aware for myself of like titles that I put on people. Yeah. I think that's huge. Yeah. And, and, um, 
you know, will we'll resonate with different teachers and different people or different teachings at different times, depending on what we're needing to evolve into or experience. So it could be our cat, our dog, our, you know, <laughs> the tree. <laughs> and and the, the medicine's right there, right? It's all, it's all a reflection, it's all a mirror. I love that as a person. All right. Well, this has been so juicy and fruitful. I'm super excited about everything that you're bringing forward. I'm so excited to, to read the book and we'll have to have you back on after it, after it comes out and hear more about how that experience has been in the completion of writing and, yeah. and that journey as well. So I'd love to have you back and thank you just so much for sharing your, your wisdom and your stories and your experience and your vulnerabilities. And it's just been so beautiful to have you. Thanks, Luna. So love you and love what you're doing and just blessings to all the women that hear this. You know, may you feel the support that's always here and really follow the calling of your heart. And we're in this together. We've got each other and we're held by a, a bigger grace. So thank you. I'm so inspired by what you're sharing and honored to be here and part of it. Thank you. And thank you everyone for listening and tuning in. And again, you can find Alyssa at alyssanobriga.com. Is there anything you have upcoming that you want to share? I've just been sharing more on YouTube. Um, I don't, I'm just writing this book or it's writing me. And so nothing really outwardly, just wanting to share on social media in whatever way I can to, to serve. Great. Right. Well, you can follow Alyssa and hear all of her, her shares on YouTube and Instagram and Facebook and check out her website. And um, there's links on our site to all of her work as well. So thanks so much to all the listeners for being here. Thanks, Alyssa, for being here. And thank you for whom, whomever is guiding me to be here as well. Thank you so much. <laughs> Bye for now. It's freebie time. We love you so much and we couldn't do this without you. And we know that you're passionate about everything that we're discussing here. So we've created not one, but two free giveaways for you. One is the amazing in-depth interactive ebook exploring the seven pillars of feminine leadership. And the second is a guided meditation for you to align to your heart's knowing. Head on over to ladieswholeadpodcast.com to sign up and instantly get both of those amazing goodies. Thank you all so much for being here. What a gift to share in such beautiful communion with these wise ladies who lead. As you know, the likes, the stars, clicks, comments, reviews, and shares are so gratefully welcomed as it helps spread the word and inspire others to lead from within. Thank you. To hear more of our guest interviews and to learn more about this movement, head on over to ladieswholeadpodcast.com where you can subscribe to never miss an episode. I'm so grateful we spent this time together. Until our next one, let your heart